May 31st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapters 13 and 14 from the Old Testament. Just then a prophet from Judah, sent by the Lord, arrived in Bethel, as Jeroboam was standing near the altar ready to offer a sacrifice. With the authority of the Lord he cried out against the altar, O altar, altar, this is what the Lord says, look, a son named Josiah will be born to the Davidic dynasty. He will sacrifice on you the priest of the high places who offer sacrifices on you. Human bones will be burned on you. That day he also announced a sign. This is a sign the Lord has predetermined. The altar will be split open and the ashes on it will fall to the ground. When the king heard what the prophet cried out against the altar in Bethel, Jeroboam, standing at the altar, extended his hand and ordered, Seize him! The hand he had extended shriveled up, and he could not pull it back. The altar split open, and the ashes fell from the altar to the ground in fulfillment of the sign the prophet had announced with the Lord's authority. The king pled with the prophet, Seek the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me, so that my hand may be restored. So the prophet sought the Lord's favor, and the king's hand was restored to its former condition. The king then said to the prophet, Come home with me and have something to eat. I'd like to give a present. But the prophet said to the king, Even if you were to give me half your possessions, I could not go with you and eat and drink in this place. For the Lord gave me strict orders, Do not eat or drink there and do not go home the way you came. So he started back on another road. He did not travel back on the same road he had taken to Bethel. Now there was an old prophet living in Bethel. When his sons came home, they told their father everything the prophet had done in Bethel that day and all the words he had spoken to the king. Their father asked them, Which road did he take? His son showed him the road the prophet from Judah had taken. He then told his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. When they had saddled the donkey for him, he mounted it and took off after the prophet, whom he found sitting under an oak tree. He asked him, Are you the prophet from Judah? He answered, Yes, I am. He then said to him, Come home with me and eat something. But he replied, I can't go back with you or eat and drink with you in this place. For the Lord gave me strict orders. Do not eat or drink there. Do not go back the way you came. The old prophet then said, I too am a prophet like you. An angel told me with the Lord's authority, bring him back with you to your house so he can eat and drink. But he was lying to him. So the prophet went back with him and ate and drank in his house. While they were sitting at the table, the Lord spoke through the old prophet, and he cried out to the prophet from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have rebelled against the Lord and have not obeyed the command the Lord your God gave you. You went back and ate and drank in this place, even though he said to you, Do not eat or drink there. Therefore your corpse will not be buried in your ancestral tomb. When the prophet from Judah finished his meal, the old prophet saddled his visitor's donkey for him. As the prophet from Judah was traveling, a lion attacked him on the road and killed him. His corpse was lying on the road, and the donkey and the lion just stood there beside it. Some men came by and saw the corpse lying in the road with the lion standing beside it. They went and reported what they had seen in the city where the old prophet lived. When the old prophet who had invited him to his house heard the news, he said, It is the prophet who rebelled against the Lord. The Lord delivered him over to the lion, and it ripped him up and killed him just as the Lord warned him. He told his son, Saddle my donkey, and they did so. He went and found the corpse lying in the road with the donkey and the lion standing beside it. The lion had neither eaten the corpse nor attacked the donkey. The old prophet picked up the corpse of the prophet, put it on the donkey, and brought it back. The old prophet then entered the city to mourn him and to bury him. He put the corpse into his own tomb and they mourned over him, saying, Ah, my brother. After he buried him, he said to his sons, when I die, bury me in the tomb where the prophet is buried. Put my bones right beside his bones. For the prophecy he announced with the Lord's authority against the altar in Bethel and against all the temples on the high places in the cities of the north will certainly be fulfilled. 
After this happened, Jeroboam still did not change his evil ways. He continued to appoint common people as priests at the high places. Anyone who wanted the job he consecrated as a priest. This sin caused Jeroboam's dynasty to come to an end and to be destroyed from the face of the earth. At that time, Jeroboam's son Abijah became sick. Jeroboam told his wife, Disguise yourself so that people cannot recognize you are Jeroboam's wife. Then go to Shiloh. Ahijah the prophet, who told me I would rule over this nation, lives there. Take ten loaves of bread, some small cakes, and a container of honey and visit him. He will tell you what will happen to the boy. Jeroboam's wife did as she was told. She went to Shiloh and visited Ahijah. Now Ahijah could not see. He had lost his eyesight in his old age. But the Lord had told Ahijah, Look, Jeroboam's wife is coming to find out from you what will happen to her son, for he is sick. Tell her so and so. When she comes, she will be in a disguise. When Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps as she came through the door, he said, Come on in, wife of Jeroboam. Why are you pretending to be someone else? I have been commissioned to give you bad news. Go, tell Jeroboam. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I raised you up from among the people and made you ruler over my people Israel. I tore the kingdom away from the Davidic dynasty and gave it to you. But you are not like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me wholeheartedly by doing only what I approve. You have sinned more than all who came before you. You went and angered me by making other gods. Formed out of metal, you have completely disregarded me. So I am ready to bring disaster on the dynasty of Jeroboam. I will cut off every last male belonging to Jeroboam in Israel, including even the weak and incapacitated. I will burn up the dynasty of Jeroboam just as one burns manure until it is completely consumed. Dogs will eat the members of your family who die in the city, and the birds of the sky will eat the ones who die in the country. Indeed, the Lord has announced it. As for you, get up and go home. When you set foot in the city, the boy will die. All Israel will mourn him and bury him. He is the only one in Jeroboam's family who will receive a decent burial, for he is the only one in whom the Lord God of Israel found anything good. The Lord will raise up a king over Israel who will cut off Jeroboam's dynasty. It is ready to happen. The Lord will attack Israel, making it like a reed that sways in the water. He will remove Israel from this good land he gave to their ancestors and scatter them beyond the Euphrates River, because they angered the Lord by making Asherah poles. He will hand Israel over to their enemies because of the sins which Jeroboam committed and which he made Israel commit. So Jeroboam's wife got up and went back to Tirzah. As she crossed the threshold of the house, the boy died. All Israel buried him and mourned for him, just as the Lord had predicted through his servant, the prophet Ahijah. The rest of the events of Jeroboam's reign, including the details of his battle and rule, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the King of Israel. Jeroboam ruled for 22 years, then he passed away. His son Nadab replaced him as king. Now Rehoboam, son of Solomon, ruled in Judah. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he ruled for 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord chose from all the tribes of Israel to be his home. His mother was an Ammonite woman named Nehemiah. Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord. They made him more jealous by their sins than their ancestors had done. They even built for themselves high places, sacred pillars, and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There were also male cultic prostitutes in the land. They committed the same horrible sins as the nations that the Lord had driven out from before the Israelites. In King Rehoboam's fifth year, King Shishak of Egypt attacked Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the Lord's temple and of the royal palace. He took everything, including all the golden shields that Solomon had made. King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and assigned them to the officers of the royal guard who protected the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king visited the Lord's temple, the royal guard carried them. 
and then brought them back to the guard room. The rest of the events of Rehoboam's reign, including his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of Kings of Judah. Rehoboam and Jeroboam were continually at war with each other. Rehoboam passed away and was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. His mother was an Ammonite named Nehemiah. His son, Abijah, replaced him as king. God, just like these kings, we all try to serve two masters. They all wanted your approval, uh, your authority and your miracles and all that went with that. But they also wanted their own ego intact so that they could build all these altars and various things to deities and gods, some that they made up. They wanted people to worship them and they wanted people to worship you. They wanted all of the glory and power that you could give kings as they saw in David. Yet they wanted everyone to acknowledge that the power came from them instead of from you. And I think about our own lives and how we do this. How we try and serve two masters, how we try and serve two gods. One, the God of our ego, and then you, God. And you're really clear in the Bible that that's not going to happen. It is all you or nothing. And it took me a very long time, one, to understand this. Two, I will probably struggle with that for the rest of my life because I want to serve my sin and I want to serve you. And it is just a daily struggle uh, to choose what is right. And that seems so horrid even saying that, God. Of course I want to choose what's good. Of course I want to choose what you want. Of course I want to choose the right path. And yet my sinful nature, my egotistical nature, uh, my desire to make it all about me and, and my will and what it is I want. Somehow throughout the day, I, I that gets bigger in my life, bigger in my heart, bigger in my mind than you. I don't know how it happens. I'm not, I'm not making excuses by any means. But how in the world, knowing how sovereign you are and knowing how puny I am, how in the world do I make me bigger in my mind than you? I don't know. But I do know it's something, God, that we always have to work on. Going back to John 3.30, my, my life verse. You must become greater, I must become less. And once we put that into perspective, once we understand that there's not serving two gods, we can't serve our ego and what we want and also serve you. It just doesn't work that way. There's not two compartments that we can put everything into. You say, give your life to me. Humble yourself before me. Lay down everything before me. You don't say, I'll take Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 o'clock. <laughs> and yet, that's what we try and give you, God. We try to schedule you in to our lives instead of making our lives all about you and turning ourselves over, even if it has to be daily or hourly or by the minute, turning ourselves over to you so that you can rule as the king in our lives. God, help us to focus today on making that intention, that focus, that direction we're going. Help it be one focus. Help it be all about you. Help us to remove our ego out of this situation. Our ego does nothing for your kingdom. In fact, it causes a lot more problems than, than are there in the first place. God, allow us to make it all about you, your glory, your mercy, your sovereignty, your forgiveness, and your amazing love. And allow us to then turn over all glory to you, that it is not about us, that it is all about you, and that everything that happens is because of you. Thank you, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen.